Hi guys, my name is Brittany and I am the owner and founder of Snoozy Mama Sleep Solutions. So many of you guys have reached out to me wondering how to completely take the netting off of your snoo. In this video, I am going to go over a step-by-step -step guide on how to completely remove the netting, wash the netting, and reapply the netting. Along the way, I will also be offering tips and tricks and troubleshooting for those tricky areas on how to reassemble the snoo back together. Before we get started, I wanted to tell you about our O-rings repair kit. Since you will be opening up the inside of your snoo, I highly recommend replacing the O-rings to ensure your snoo receives a thorough tune-up. To order your O-rings kit, go to our website at www.snoozymama.com or simply click on the link down below. So the first thing you guys are gonna wanna do is put some gloves on. The used snoo can be very dirty, so you wanna protect yourself. So the first step we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our wedge tool. This tool helps open, pop open all of these clips. So what you wanna do is you wanna take your tool, dig it underneath, and do a twisting motion to pop them off. You're gonna do this with all of the, the snaps. After you remove all your clips, sometimes some spit up gets caked in between. I take a bowl of very hot water, I spray my Dawn, and I let my clips soak in here while I'm cleaning the rest of the netting. The next step that we're gonna do is we're gonna pull up the mesh and clean in between. So the, how you do that is you just easily pop the mesh up. So now that you have your mesh disconnected, you can lift up and see how much dirt is on the inside of your snoo. For the vacuum, I use my handheld Ryobi vacuum with the special extension tubing so I can get into all of the crevices. These are all linked into my secondhand survival snoo guide. So you'll be able to order them off Amazon. In this next step, we're gonna take our vacuum and we're gonna suck up all the dust and dirt that we can get with our vacuum. You wanna make sure you're getting behind the swivel. So take, take your hand and move the snoo so you can get underneath the base here. And do the same for this side. Swivel it so you can suck up all of the dust and dirt on underneath the base. You can see now there's a bunch of dust and dirt and crumbs that are in the inner rim of the snoo. You can take your vacuum and try to get as much as you can out by just circling the rim. The next step is to collect most of the dust that you could not get with the vacuum. So I take a Swiffer duster to collect all of the loose debris that was not picked up at the vacuum. So you just take this and I do a swipe on the outer rim. So remember, you can always swivel the base to get underneath the base. The next step is we're gonna take a disinfecting wipe and disinfect the inside. I use just your standard disinfecting right wipe. You can use any cleaner that you guys feel comfortable with. We're now gonna get all of this caked on spit up that we could not collect with the Swiffer duster or the vacuum. Remember to swivel the base so you can get underneath the easiest way to get in here is to take the netting on the side that you're working and just roll it over so you can see the area you're trying to clean. Here you can see there is some uh, caked on spit up and we're just going to take our wipe and clean that off. It should come off pretty easily with your wet wipe. The snoo has four arches that you can also clean. These do tend to collect a bit of dust and dirt as well. So take your wet wipe 
and then just wipe up and down. There's two in the front and there's two in the back. So after we have pulled up and removed the net, the inner mesh, we now want to flip our snoo onto our side so we can work on the, the bottom of the snoo here. We're going to be taking out all these tiny little screws, but the first thing you want to do is you want to put the, if you have the dust cover of the snoo, this works perfectly to catch all of the screws. If you don't have the dust cover, uh, I recommend maybe a large trash bag. The purpose that this serves is once all the screws are loose, I'm going to tip the snoo over the bag and shake the screws out. So this acts as a catcher of all the screws. To unscrew all of these screws, you can use a manual screwdriver. It is a lot more work, but it still gets the job done. I use a powered screwdriver uh, just to make the job a little bit more easy. You could use a drill, but I would be very careful with a power drill because you don't know the, if you're gonna ruin the snoo if you get too tight. All of these tiny screws, there's a border along the inside, and then there's tiny screws on a second layer. Once you get the screws, then I take all of my screws and I put them into a small cup or bowl to keep them in a safe place. We're gonna take out 27 small screws in the bottom of the snoo, and they are located all around the rim and then the inner rim as well. These bigger screws here, we do not touch. So these big holes, we are not touching. We are focusing on these tiny screws that are deep inside the snoo. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. So the screw is not gonna come out right away. Remember, we're gonna, after we loosen all of them, we're gonna tip the snoo over and catch all of the screws into our bag. There is one hidden screw here that I wanna show you on the side where the tag is of the snoo, there's one extra screw hole right there. So don't forget that one. If you guys forget to take out a screw, the netting will not lift up. So you might have to hunt for a screw if you um, are getting stuck. We are now gonna take the screws out. Since our screws are not magnetic, unfortunately, we have to have some way to catch them. So this is where our trash bag or our dust bag is going to come into play. Make sure it's secure, cover the bottom of the snoo and tilt. You can hit the sides to help loosen up the screws. You can tap in the snoo. You might have to do this a couple of times in order to get all the screws. So as you can see, the majority of my screws have landed in the bag. So now I take my screws out of the bag and I put them into a cup so I can put them away for safekeeping. Not all the screws are gonna come out on your first attempt. So you have to look into each of these screw holes and see where our lingering screws are.
Once you know where your lingering screws are at, you can focus on tapping those spaces or getting back in with your screwdriver and loosening it up a little more. Two. For this next step, we're gonna learn how to take off this base part. So you wanna take your screwdriver and we are going to remove these six screws. These screws have a tiny clear piece of plastic at the bottom of it. So just make sure that doesn't fall off and you keep it together with your screw. I put them, these screws in another cup or container to keep them all together for when I need to reassemble the snoo. You should have six long screws. Step is we're gonna remove this thin metal plate. It should lift up eat pretty easily. Just comes right off. And you can set this aside. This little lock right here, we need to unscrew in order to lift this base up. Right now it's locked. This little line is closed and this circle is open. This tiny little circle right there is our marker. So if that circle is to the line, it's closed. We need to move that little circle to the open. So you take your flathead screwdriver, push down hard, hold the base since it's swivelly and turn. So you see now the circle is open the base is now unlocked. The next step is we need to remove these zip ties. I take a wire cutter because I can easily get in there. You could use some uh, scissors as well. So you take your wire cutter, there's three zip ties. We, we push the wiring over as far as we can because we do not want to cut the wiring. We are just cutting the zip ties, the clear zip ties. Once you clip it, it should come through. These are trash, so you can throw these away once you're done. The next step is we're gonna unplug the wiring. You can see that there is clips, tiny little clips. You can slide out the wiring. If you can't get in with your fingers, I use a hook tool that you can easily glide it out. This one doesn't want to go. Okay. We are now going to pull the wiring apart. You have to be very careful that we're not pulling on the wires themselves, but you want to use the brackets. I use a pair of small pliers to help me get a good grip on it. The easiest way to do this is you take your plier Make sure you're holding the bracket, not the wiring. Take your clipper or your pliers and slowly wiggle out. These are a little stiff. If you have a newer snoo, this is a 2019. If you have a newer snoo, you might be able to just pull with your fingers. The older snooze, 20, 20, 20 and below, you're going to need a tool. So same thing, hold on to the bracket and slowly wiggle it free. You're going to do that three times. One, two, three.
And remember, do not hold the wiring, hold the bracket, because if the wires come out, we can't get them back in. The next step is we're gonna take this whole plate and pull it up. There's four holes here. I put my fingers in each hole and lift up. Make sure you guide the wiring through the holes. And then once they're free, you can remove the whole base. And we are now inside of the snoo. Since you already have your snoo opened up, now is a good time to inspect your O-rings. If any of them are worn down or broken, I highly recommend taking the time to replace them. To order your O-ring kit, go to our website at www.snoozymama.com or simply click on the link down below. You can also watch my video on how to replace the O-rings located on my YouTube channel or by clicking the link in the description below. So the next step in removing the netting now that we have all of the screws unscrewed, this top piece should easily just lift up. The only place that it's still connecting is right here next to the motor. There's a couple of wires that is gonna make it so you cannot lift the whole thing up. These internal wires right here. Be careful not to lift them up completely because the snoo is still attached here. You still have some wiggle room though. You should be able to lift up and access these brackets. So in this step, we're now going to take off the netting. The netting is held on by these brackets. And just like the inside of this new netting, there is a hard piece of plastic underneath that is snapped into these brackets. The easiest way to take these off is I lift with one hand, I take my hook, I go right in the middle here, and I lift up, and it should come off. As you can see, there's two hooks on the side and one in the middle. When we take off the netting, we just want to hook the middle. Lift up and pull down. Lift up and it should pull down. You're gonna do this all around the snoo. The hard part is when you get close to these wirings where you can't get in as well as this other side, but you'll still be able to do it. Just might be a little harder because you don't have as much room to work with. So now that we've loosened the netting from the bottom, we now need to disconnect it from the top. So the easiest way to do that, take your netting, wrap it over the side. Inside the rim here, there are tubes holding it in. I take my hook tool, oh, right next to this metal, uh, this plastic piece, there's little tubes in here. I just kind of fish for it and it should easily pull out. There's two long ones and two short, small ones. So once you have the tubing out, find your um, plastic piece here and it should just pull out. You wanna pull the top part out first. This sometimes gets stuck. So you might have to pull a little harder on the corners and you're going to do the same thing on the other side of the snoo. Find the plastic part, take your hook tool and find the inner tubing. Pull it out, do the same on the other side. Find your plastic piece and 
pull the top part out first. Once you get to the ends here, there is a little bit of adhesive. You have to pull that off. And there's one on the top, the front over here as well. Pull the adhesive. And now pull the bottom portions off. This should just fall off at this point. Once you get the top out, the bottom easily slides out. And we can now remove the entire netting. So now that we have the netting completely off, we do not want to put this in the washer. This is hand wash only. What I like to do is I take my laundry room sink. If you do not have a laundry room sink, you can get a bucket and soak it in the bucket as well. I get very hot water. Fill up my sink with very hot water. I like to use OxyClean. You can use whatever laundry detergent, stain remover, anything that you feel comfortable with. I take my one scoop of OxyClean, put it in the hot water, and then I like to use Puracy Stain Remover. I just pour a few pours into the hot water. Once our water is filled up, we can now take our netting, place it in the hot water with our soap. I like to use tongs because I don't like my hands in the soap. I don't like the feeling of the OxyClean on it. So I use tongs to swish everything around. Now you don't need a ton of water. What I've always found is if you have just enough water where the fabric of the mesh is just floating nicely in here, it works really good. So I make sure every part is covered in the water. I swirl around, get the soaps all steady, and then I let this sit. You can let this sit overnight. You can let it sit for six to eight hours. Every once in a while, come back in and do some twirls and get it sudsy again. As you can already see, the water is very dirty. The dirt has already been lifted off of the snoo. So after your six to eight hours of soaking, unplug your water and then rinse out the excess soap and hang dry. If you leave it outside to dry, it actually dries pretty quickly. Um, other than that, if you are in a, a place that you can't hang it outside, you can always hang it into your bathroom over your, um, I use the shower curtain as well to hang dry it. So now that we have our clean netting, we need to put it back on the snoo. We need to make sure it's in the right position. The tag goes on the head of the bed, which is the side with this post here. The tag goes with the post. So I'm gonna roughly lay it over to get it into the right position. and get it into the right position. So get the rim back where the rim needs to go into this white felt part. Okay. 
line up. Oh, I need to line this part. Line up the back zipper right with the post. And now the first step to reassemble is to now we need to put all these clips back on. I'm going to sit over here. Putting it back together is a little more tricky than taking it off, but it is still doable. So now we want to lift up to show the clips. Just like the inside netting, there is a hard piece of plastic that goes in these clips here. We want to switch tools and we want to use our wedge tool. You hook that hard piece of plastic in these hooks here. So once it's lined up, now you take your wedge tool and you need to pop in that middle bracket over it. So I take this and I lift up until I hear a click. And I'm in. So we're going to do that for all of these clips. So you want to take that hard piece of plastic, hook it underneath the two hooks, take your wedge tool, find the middle part, lift up and push in until you hear a click. Now that we have the clips clipped in, we are going to put the tubing back in. I just want to note if you want to wash your hands because hands are very dirty. If you have anything on your hands, makeup, dirt, anything like that, we're going to be working with the rim. So we don't want to remake the rim dirty. So go and wash your hands first to make sure that you don't stain the rim of the snoo. Once your hands are clean, we are going to put this rim back in. When we took it apart, we did the top first. Now we need to get the bottom wedged in there first. I take my wedge tool for this. You want to take this lower half and put it into the metal portion. And the trick for this is once it's lined up, you then pull up and over the top because you want this to be tight. So hold it in place, pull up and over. And now we're going to roll the top portion in. You can use your fingers, your fingertips to get it into place. If you cannot get it in, you need to retighten. So pull up, over, and into the rim. You want to make a, a wide enough space because we do have to put that tube back in. If you don't feel like the tube is going to go in, Take your wedge tool and make a wider space for it. Since this is the longer portion, we now take our longer tube and it should just pop right back into place. We're going to do that same thing for all four sides. 
So now that we have our netting put back into place, we now need to put our base back on the snoo. And the first step to do that though, is we need to align these rockers. They have to be lined up perfectly or those six screws that we originally took out will not screw in. This step is very important. If you took this off, you should be able to see a tiny little hole right there. That's the marker. If this piece is not properly aligned, if that middle screw is not properly, properly aligned with that indent, those six screws are not gonna tighten and you will have to reassemble your snoo. The easiest way to do this is I take skewers. I have a metal skewer, a wooden skewer, anything that's gonna keep those in place while I put the top back on. Take your skewer, put it straight into the hole and make sure that the end of that skewer is in the indent. You do that for both sides. All right. The next step is now you need to reassemble the zip ties. The easiest way to do that is with this off, you just have more movement. So you take your zip tie and each one of these little brackets here, they should just slide right through. You can go from either direction and just to get it in place. So slide the zip ties. If one direction isn't working, try the other direction. Sometimes this can be tricky. There it goes. Leave it open for now. We're just prepping this. The next step is we need to now align the base up with our skewers. You need to make sure that you have it on the correct way. These teeth here, these metal teeth, these go on the side of the motor which is right here. The metal teeth on the bottom of the, the snoo line up on the side with the motor. This next step, we are now gonna place the base back on top. But remember, like I said, it has to be lined up correctly. So we put our skewers down and those skewers are gonna go into this middle hole here. So very carefully, I'm going to, I like to look through the middle hole, find the skewer, and slowly drop it down onto the Go very slowly because we do not want to move that brown piece. Once you have that one in, go to the next side and do the same thing. This one you have a little bit more room. I slide my hand underneath, stabilize the skewer and guide it into the hole. The next step is we now need to fish the wires back through and reconnect. 
Once again, I use my hook tool, grab the wiring through the hole. You just, some, you, sometimes you can use your finger to feel with it. And then once you know where it is, grab your hook and go in and grab it. You should be fishing out three wires. Two on this side and one over here. Once you have your wiring out, you can then reconnect. If you run into trouble and you cannot find the wiring or it's too tight, gently lift up to give yourself some extra space and pull the wiring out if you need to loosen it up. Once all the wiring, we wanna gently push down Grab our flathead screwdriver, and now we need to lock the base. So remember how we're open, the markers to open, we now need to make it closed. It might be a little wobbly. Push down, and now we're gonna lock. So the base is now locked into place. The marker is now closed. This next part is an extra step, but it is definitely worth it because if you're not lined up correctly here, once you get everything back together, you're gonna have to retake this new apart again to get those screws lined up. So before you even get to that portion, let's just make sure we're in the right spot. So take your screw, take the skewer out and put the screw in the middle. Do that on both sides. You can use your hand screwdriver, your uh, electric screwdriver, or your hand screwdriver to, to do this. These screws are very tricky. It's gonna take a while for it to catch. You see how it's just going and going and going and not tightening? Push down. and it, it will eventually screw in. You're gonna do the same on this side. We're just doing the middle ones and I'm just doing just this to make sure I'm in the right spot. So the same on this, push down. We are lined up correctly. The next step is now we're going to attach the wires. This little ridge here fits into this opening there. Reconnect. We're gonna do the same with all three wires. The next step is now putting the wires nicely back. The nice thing about the snoo is it has the markers for us. So we know exactly where we need to place the wiring. You see these markers? These are where we're going to put them in the clips and where we're gonna fasten the zip ties. This one, there's the mark. Fish it underneath the hook. Fish this one underneath the hook but we still have some loose ends here. Pull the side. You can use your hook tool once again. Pull the side that does not have that wire, the red mark, to gently put it into place. And then take the wiring and tuck it in. This side, same thing. It tells you where the zip tie needs to be tightened. Tighten the zip tie. Tighten the zip tie. And we're gonna do the same thing on this side. Line up 
the marker. Pull the portion that does not have the red mark through. Gently push that into the foam and tighten the zip tie on the mark. Next, we now need to clip off the excess zip ties. Take your snipper or your scissors. The easiest way is to just clip as close to the knob as possible. The next step here is we are now going to remove these middle screws here. Be very careful not to wiggle the snoo. We're gonna take it out and we're gonna put our placeholder right back in. And do the same with this side. Once you take that screw, immediately put your placeholder back in. We now are gonna grab our thin metal piece. This part with the speaker slats goes on the side with the speaker. The speaker is this square box. Speaker holes go over the side of the speaker. So just like we did with the base, we're gonna line up the holes with our skewers. This one's a lot easier to do. Gently place over. Now we're gonna take our six screws and screw in the base. Take out the skewer, put in the middle, take out the other skewer, put your screw in the middle. This is the moment of truth is if we're lined up correctly. Push down when you're tightening the screw. That one's in. We're gonna do the same on this side. Push down when you're tightening the screw. And we're in. Now that those are locked, we can confidently put in the rest. If your screws are not tightening and pushing down, applying pressure while tightening does not tighten it, try a couple more attempts. Sometimes it takes a while for that screw to catch into that brown part. If that is still not working, what you can do is you can flip the snoo onto its side and hit the side like this. The whole point of that is we're trying to move that brown piece into the correct space. It's hard to tell which way it's off, so you can try both ways. On its side, hit, and try, and then apply pressure and re-screw. If that's not working, try the other side. Flip it on the side.
bang, pressure, and try to screw in. The last step is to put the 27 screws back in. So we're going to do the same thing that we did taking it out, but we're just putting it back in. Don't forget the one that, the screw that usually gets forgotten, the one right behind this eight, this peanut shaped thing. Goes right in the middle, the back there. You should have 27 screws in your cup that you have put back together. I always like to do an extra check and I look into every single hole to make sure that each screw is in there. In these final steps, we're gonna put the netting back into the base. You wanna take this hard plastic piece, line it up behind the, the sensor clip. Take your wedge tool. Do not use your nails because your nails will split. Take your wedge tool and push the hard plastic piece into the clip. You should hear a click once it's in. The final step is applying the clips back in to the base. This part can be tricky and I will go over some troubleshooting tips if you get stuck. The easiest way to do this is this flat piece here goes into this opening on the inner clip. You pop it in. I use my thumbs. I push down on the side closest to the netting first. Once I hear the clip, then I can do the other side as well. One of the parts that you might get stuck on is trying to get these clips back in. And here is the trick. If you're seeing that this opening right here is thin, this clip is not gonna clip in there. This opening right here needs to be wide open like this one. The reason that this one is not open is because the hard part of the netting is not pushed all the way in. So you'll have to pull it out, take your wedge tool and push it in a little bit farther and you'll see that little mouth open up. Now your clip will go in smoothly. The other part where you might get stuck on is you'll find that it will go in, the first one will snap, but then this second clip will not snap in. So what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna take your wedge tool and you're gonna go directly into the second hole and push down. And it should pop right into place. If your snoo has a lot of little pillings, um, on the netting that can easily be removed with a fabric shaver. This is a fabric shaver I got off of Amazon. This is in my tool supply list. You can easily click on the link to purchase. All you need to do is turn it on and go over the pilling portions and it shaves it right off. So after you have all your clips in and your snoo is dried and clean, you're ready to go.